Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how to use Django Storages to store user uploaded files to Amazon S3. So typically when you have user uploaded files, the default way of storing them is just on the file system that the app is running on. But this can be problematic in a couple of reasons. One, it can be a security issue because you're allowing users to just upload something to your server. So you may not want that. And the other issue is sometimes your method of deployment doesn't allow for uploaded files. So for example, if you use something like Heroku, you won't be able to upload files to Heroku after you've done the initial upload of your entire app because of the way the Heroku file system works, you just can't do it. So you need to host your uploaded files somewhere else. So in this video, I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to set up everything. It's not too bad. Uh, it's just a bunch of configuration really, and I'll go through all the steps for that. So right now I have a project set up. I have storages example as that project, and I have a single app in there called example. So for this video, I'm going to create a model that allows me to upload some things and I'll just create it here. And this will be a model called, let's say cats or just cat. I have pictures of cats on my computer for testing. So I'll do models.model and then I'll put a name of the cat. So models char field, uh, max length, we'll say 30. And then I'll actually need the picture of the cat. So picture and I'll say models.file field. And then for the upload location, upload to, I'll put media. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make the migrations for this. Make migrations. And then I'll migrate. And then finally, I'll add it to admin so I can see it. So admin.site.register, and I'll need the cat model, cat. And then I'll import that. Okay, so now if I start the server, I should be able to see it on my admin dashboard. So I'll go over there and I'll go to admin and just log in. Okay, so I have my model here, cat. And if I go to add cat, I could put in a name and browse for a particular file. So before I do that, I want to set where I'm going to upload this. So right now by default, it will create a directory on my computer every time I upload a file and put the cat image in there. But I want to use AWS for this. So I need to set up an S3 account and I need to install Django Storages. So I'll start by installing Django Storages first. So pip install Django Storages. So let's do that down here. And Django Storages is the library that allows me to do this easily, save the media to Amazon S3 without having to do much. So in addition to Django Storages, I also have to install something called Bodo3. This library allows you to connect with services on AWS and you can upload uh, images through it to S3. So I have those. Now I need to go to my settings because there are a few settings that are important for Boto3. So if I go down to the bottom, I can just do it down here. Uh, there are four settings that I need for AWS. And then there's one that basically tells Django Storages which backend I want to upload to. So in addition to S3, I can upload to other places. So for example, if I click uh, DigitalOcean, they have configuration for DigitalOcean, uh, FTP, Dropbox, and so on. But I want Amazon S3. So here, the first configuration that I need is the default file storage. This will actually tell Django Storages where I wanna upload things. So I'll put that here. So storages.backend.s3boto3.s3boto3 storage. And then I need some configuration for AWS. So let me go back. And there are four. So I need the access key ID, the access key, the secret access key, the storage bucket name, and then the auth query string. It's optional, but I'll put that as well. So let me go ahead and put these three. So access key, and I just copy the same one twice. Secret access key, I have a storage bucket name. And then I'll use the query string off uh, just because I don't want to have my access key in the URL. I'm going to make my bucket public so anyone can view the images. So I'll just put this to false. I can put this to false now because it's a true or false value. Okay, so I need these other three. So let me go over to AWS. 
and I'm logged in already and I want to go to S3 so I can go to services here and click on storage or S3 under storage. And then I'll create a bucket and this is where the files get stored. So I'll say pretty printed cat pictures, All right? That's the name of the bucket. And then for the public access, what I'll do is I'll uncheck the block all public access. So when it comes to security settings on AWS, it can get pretty complicated. So I'm going to use the simplest security setting here, just to allow anyone to view the file. But if you want to make it different, then you'll have to go through the documentation for the security settings and do it yourself. And it can get quite complicated. And this isn't the only thing, and I'll show you the other thing, but uh, I'll just make it public for demonstration purposes. And then I'll click create bucket. And I think I need to check that, create bucket. Okay, so pretty printed cat pictures. I can go ahead and copy that and then put it in the storage bucket name. And now I need to add permissions to it. So I already checked the block public access thing. I turned it off. And then the bucket policy, I need to create it. So I'll click the edit here and then I'll go to policy generator. And this little tool allows you to generate a policy. And it's just JSON, and you'll see that in a moment. But for the type of policy, I'll use S3 bucket policy. Uh, the effect will be allowed, so everyone will be allowed. Star for everything in the bucket. And then the service is S3. The action, I want to go down to get object. So I'm looking for that, get object. And then the resource name is back here. We see this thing, so I'll just copy that and I'll paste it in here, add statement, and then once that's added, I can generate the policy and then I can go ahead and copy that and paste it in here. So this will allow anyone to view the images that were uploaded if they have the URL. So I'll save the changes there and I have an error. Let's see, action doesn't, oh, so in addition to the resource here, I need slash star. So pretty printed cat pictures slash star, and then I'll hit save changes and that should work. Okay, so I have my bucket set up, so the files are going to be uploaded there. And now I need the credentials. So once again, the way you get credentials can be complicated. You can set up certain users that only have access to certain things, but I'm just gonna use my root account to generate access keys. And of course I'm going to delete this so no one can use my access keys after this video. So I'll go and add these to my configuration. So the access key ID, and then the secret access key. So I'll add those to the strings. And then I have them there. Of course, if you were actually doing this, you might want to put these in environment variables and then load them into the settings.py instead of just putting them directly here, especially if you're uploading your project to GitHub in a public repo. So just keep that in mind. If you have configuration values like this, do not upload it to a public repo until you create environment variables and then substitute the environment variable here or you just have a private repo or you just don't upload to a repo. But I suggest using environment variables for sensitive credentials like this because what happens is there are automated tools out there that are looking for access keys on things like GitHub. And as soon as they find them, they use them uh, in some way and then it runs up the cost in your account and you're gonna have to deal with Amazon and explain to them why your account has so many charges on it when it wasn't you doing it. So just make sure these these values are never public. So I'll close this. And if you didn't see where I went, just go to your name and then security credentials. And then you'll have this page here. You can click access keys and then generate the access key. So I believe that is everything that I need to run this. So I'll go ahead and run the server and I'll try uploading some pictures. So I'll go back to my admin dashboard. I'll refresh this. And then I'll just add some cats. So Fluffy, I have a picture called Cat4. I'll save that. So this means there's something wrong with either my access key or the secret. And if I go here, I see there's a space at the beginning. So for some reason, it added a space. So I'll go ahead and save that and try this again. So I'll go back and try to re-add Fluffy. So Cat4. 
then save. Okay, so we see it was added successfully. So if I go back to AWS and I'll go to S3 again, I should now be able to look in my bucket and see the file. So it was cat4, I click on that and I see the media folder. So the media folder is the one that was created for me because I have that upload too. And I see cat4.ping. And if I click this, you'll see in the URL, I have an S3 URL instead of one for my app. So this is exactly what I want. And of course, if I upload another one, like cat3, and save this. Go to cat object two, click on the link. Once again, I see an Amazon S3 URL instead of a URL from my app. And if I refresh the bucket here, then I see the two cat pictures. So that's all that's necessary for allowing for uploads to Amazon S3. Like I said, if you're using something like Heroku, this is really helpful. And really for any purpose, it's helpful because you won't allow users to upload things directly to your server. It goes off to Amazon server, which presumably is more secure. They can handle static files better. So you don't have to worry about any issues there. So if you have any questions about this process, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.